Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Majestic speaking and today we're going to be looking into some more MechWarrior Online here. In front of me I have the second of the two brand new mechs that were just released in the latest patch update. This is the Catapult Butterbee. It is also the second of two hero variants for the Catapult chassis. But whereas the Jester focused on laser boating with those high mounts, this focuses more on the traditional Catapult role which you'll find focuses more on the missile hardpoints. So we're definitely going to show you the differences here. We're going to go through everything. We're going to go through the hardpoints, the quirks, the custom loadout that I placed on it myself, a round of gameplay, and then close with some final thoughts as to whether or not this is a mech that you guys feel is worth going out and buying for yourselves. So before we get started, just a couple disclaimers here. I am not a catapult pilot. Before this patch even came out, I just didn't want to even deal with these guys because as I said, the, these ears were just so huge and outlandish. You were getting pinged, you know, behind what you thought was cover and you were losing these these critical hard points um, in the, the arms as they like to call it or as I like to see it as the ears and you didn't even know like how or why. So a lot of people turn these things into long range missile boats. Um, and that was really the role that it played out there on the battlefield, but a lot of people decide, you know what, it's kind of boring, and standing in the back just providing that constant barrage of missiles from behind your own lines, you don't really see much of the action. You're hoping for locked targets, it just, the list goes on and on. But now, with this very, very significant uh, rescaling down for this mech in particular, this makes this mech a little bit more feasible to take out there on the battlefield. These ears aren't so outlandish anymore. They're actually a lot more bearable than they were before the patch update. So you're seeing a lot of people now taking them back out for another spin, seeing how that profile comes into effect. And I feel like PGI intentionally targeted the catapult because it was huge. And if you look at where the difference is between before the patch and now post patch, it has significantly decreased in size. So we're gonna go through everything. And you know, just as another uh, little side note for you guys, again, I'm going to cater this thing towards my playstyle because of that profile decrease. That opens up quite a couple of options for us in taking this guy out there on the battlefield. So not to say that you know you weren't seeing SRM builds or short to mid range builds on, on catapults before the patch update, but you know now it makes it even more feasible because you know you're not such a huge target anymore so that's exactly how i built this thing um you know it is catered completely to my playstyle, so hopefully you guys understand and appreciate it from that perspective but as a couple other things before we dive into the hard points this mech is completely mastered so you're going to see it from an optimal standpoint it has all the bells and whistles custom loadout modules skill tree is completely full so you're going to see what you can actually expect to get if you actually go out and get this mech for yourselves and then you know master it for yourselves so we're going to take it out for a round of gameplay so you can actually demonstrate how it performs out there on the battlefield but just so you guys know i did serve as a guinea pig i spent the mech credits full price to get this guy so that i I could give a review for you guys before you go out and get it for yourselves and decide whether or not it's a feasible mech that you actually want to place in your garages so without further ado let's hop into the actual hard points load out everything we're going to go through the hard points first hard points zero ballistic hard points four energy hard points four missile hard points one ams hard point again nobody gives a shit and zero ecm hard points so you know obviously if i'm going short to mid range with my play style those energy hard points are going to be more small lasers and medium lasers. And then for the missile hard points, I only have two options, long range or short range. Obviously, I went short range. So all the energy hard points are filled with short to mid range and the missile hard points are filled with all short range, obviously. As for the quirks, in comparing this to the Jester, I'm a little bit disappointed by the amount of weapon quirks that were applied to this variant only has missile velocity bonus of 10%. So that applies on a very generic basis. You could apply that to either SRMs or LRMs. It doesn't matter. So it's not really differentiating this mech or saying like what you should, you know, focus on really in catering to the playstyle of the Butterbee as it as, as it is built. So, you know, if you look at the Catapult Jester, it has laser duration 10%, energy heat generation 10%, and energy range 10%. 
and all of the hard points cater towards energy. So you know exactly what you're getting with this mech. You know how you should actually build it so that it caters to the playstyle of not only yourself, but how the build should actually be out there on the battlefield from a general perspective. The Butterbee, as I said, only has missile velocity. So, you know, whether you decide to go short or long range, you're kind of, you know, you could kind of pick and choose for yourself, which is great, but I wish they just had some other, you know, uh, weapon quirks to go along with it, maybe to cater towards, you know, bolstering a little bit. It is a specialty mech, and if you're paying mech credits to get it, you should get a couple extra features to it, in, in my honest opinion. Um, so that's where, you know, I, I kind of, you know, compared the two. But... The Butterbee also does have a lot more structure in comparison to the Jester. You can see it has about, uh, the, the, the Jester has about two-thirds the amount of structure buffs as the Butterbee does. If you compare them, you know, all-encompassing, not, not, you know, verbatim, but... The Butterbee is definitely built a little bit tougher. So because of that, I said, you know what, with the missile velocity applying on both sides and the additional structure, maybe a, a short to mid-range build actually is feasible on the catapults. Not that you weren't seeing them before, but now it's even more possible with the structure buff, the missile velocity quirk, and now the smaller profile, we could actually turn this guy into a short to mid-range brawler. Um, and that's the perspective that I took with it. As, I'm, as I've been telling you guys, you know, that is my typical playstyle. With any of these other heavies that you see me normally take out, I always have that short to mid-range build or the high DPS build. And that's exactly what I went for with this guy. So let's hop into the actual, uh, you know, loadout for this thing. Four SRM6s with Artemis. I think that was critical. I wanted to make sure that these hard points were filled with exactly what I wanted to, you know, make sure I had on this mech if I were to turn it into a skirmish brawler. And using an alpha with four SRM6s, including Artemis on there, this thing is packing quite a punch. This variant also has jump jets, so I placed two class three jump jets in each torso, along with the four energy hard points catering towards small pulse lasers has four and a half tons of srm ammo two external double heat sinks uh in it, one in each torso and then two also in my xl 315 engine now there's another note that i want to point out i know some of you might not agree with the xl engine on a catapult but guess what it's feasible now you can actually take it out there with an xl engine and not have to worry about losing that torso it has a smaller profile, as I've constantly been saying, and because of those structure buffs, we do get a little bit of extra padding, so it does work. It can actually be taken out there in the skirmish brawly setting um, and, and you know do its part. So with those four SRM6s and the four small pulse lasers, I was thinking, oh man, I hope I made it you know with my heat management threshold minimum. My heat will heat my management threshold minimum for heat is always 1.2 so i said as long as it can get above that with this loadout i am totally set on it i will definitely work with it and it does 1.3 is the heat management with 14 double heat sinks 10 in the engine four external as i had mentioned to you guys 65 out of 65 tons being used 76 out of 78 slots 416 out of 422 armor i took four out of the head and then two out of each leg you can mix and match with this as you want because obviously the legs aren't a focal point for your opponents in uh you know taking off but you know you could you could leave it all on there and take it all out of the head or put it all back on the head and take it out of the legs it's really up to you what you want to do i decided to take four out of the head and then one out of each leg um you know just to balance it a little bit but you know you can mix and match as you see fit now the reason why this heat management ratio is so is is you know above my threshold i originally had medium lasers on there four mediums but that brought it down to a 1.17 heat management ratio and although i could fit everything else on there i just wasn't sold on using four mediums from a heat perspective um using an alpha on this thing can rack up the heat despite whatever map you're on so you do have to factor stuff like that into consideration 67.6 points of damage on an alpha is what this thing deals so that is definitely significant in a sh in a short to mid-range brawly scenario that is 68 points of damage that are pinpointed with that artemis and these small pulse lasers 
You know, they're going to back up. I can guarantee it. 84.4 kph with speed tweak again i did place two jump jets on there so it has a 16.2 uh jump distance on there so it's it's manageable it can actually get you you know up in the in the canyons it can get you around on pretty much any map for what you need it for it's not gonna make you fly above buildings or anything like that but it definitely serves the purpose for what i have it on there for so Again, taking this entire mech into perspective and the build that I placed on it, I know it's a skirmish brawly build. I have the XL315 in there. It has the biggest possible engine that you can fit um, with that, that 315 there. So, you know, the three things that I always keep in mind, especially when I'm building out my skirmish brawly builds, are speed, maneuverability, and damage. So obviously this thing is catering to all three and all three of them are checked off and you have to place an XL engine on it if you wanna have the tonnage capacity to you know work with the, the loadout that you wanna fit on this thing. So that's exactly what I did. Again, just as a summary, four SRM6s with Artemis, four small pulse lasers, one in each torso, and then two in the center torso, four and a half tons of, of ammo, two external double heat sinks on the engine, two, one in each torso, uh, two jump jets, one in each torso, and again, to round it all off with that XL315 engine, this thing is not only packs a punch, but moving 84.4 kph around the battlefield certainly is an added bonus as well. So hopefully you guys can appreciate it from the perspective of how I built it, it's more feasible to take this out as a skirmish brawler, and that's the reason why I'm excited to take it out for you guys today. But before we go through the actual round of gameplay, let's check out the modules. Advanced seismic sensor. When I'm brawling, I want to know what's around me. I want to see what is maybe sneaking up behind me or trying to get a flank on me and the rest of the team. So I place the seismic sensor, which will identify mechs up to 250 meters in range as long as I'm standing still. So I decided to place that on there as my mech module. Weapon modules, SRM6 range and a small pulse laser range. I want to get as much range out of both of my weapon hard points, both my weapon classes, um, as much as possible. So this, they are both level five modules. They're adding a 10% bonus for both. So it is still very short to mid range, but you know, you're gonna have to take it into consideration the fact that we need as much range as we can in order to actually deal the amount of damage that we're looking to do. This isn't a, you know, a constant frontline mech by any means. Um, it is at, at the end of the day, a heavy, so it doesn't have that same tonnage padding that you'll get in an assault, but it definitely serves the purpose that you're looking to make out of it. And along with those two weapon modules, I also decided to add a third weapon module now I can mix between either the SRM 6 cooldown so in case I don't want to fire off those small pulse lasers again and I just want to focus on dealing that damage with the SRMs I can cater it towards that with this module the SRM 6 cooldown 5 reduces cooldown time by 12 percent so that definitely adds a little bit of an extra pep to this thing to fire them off a little quicker and because we have that 1.3 heat management it is doable it is sustainable um, from a heat management and dissipation perspective so this mech does have the in how i built it it does have decent heat management and decent heat dissipation so using this srm cooldown isn't detrimental now the other module that i switched this out with is radar deprivation you can go with either or you're either getting more shots off with the srm6 which is what i prefer to do or um you're getting you know you're hiding behind buildings and you know anyone who had their target on you is losing target on you almost immediately um, with radar deprivation so again i switch this guy off pretty frequently you know, based on what I'm feeling about the mech, um, but really they are interchangeable. Right now, for this video, I am using the SRM-6 cooldown, so those four SRM-6s with Artemis are gonna be firing off 12% faster than you otherwise normally would see, and with 10% bonus velocity. So that quirk does apply to the SRMs, as I mentioned before. Perfect for taking this guy out on the battlefield. But I think that's about it. Um, consumables, cool shot 9x9, just in case I happen to breach that heat management threshold, and the improved artillery strike, just to help support my team in getting them into uh, you know a more beneficial position, maybe serve as like a little bit of a distraction cover for us to get moving. Um, so we're going to take this guy out onto the battlefield, and again, close with some final thoughts afterwards as to whether you guys should or 
um, if it's uh, even a, a viable option to go out and buy in the store right now. So let's hop into the battlefield, see exactly how this guy, the Catapult Butterbee Hero variant, actually performs on the battlefield. Let's go. Alrighty guys, here we go. Our one and only round is going to take place on the Mining Collective, a perfect map for this mech. From a skirmish brawly perspective, this match should be absolutely fantastic for us. We are playing skirmish, so we don't have anything to worry about other than beating everyone else up. So we're going to take that into consideration completely. We don't have to worry about caps. We don't have to worry about, you know, standing in a circle for the beacon. We don't have to worry about capping a base. We just have to worry about shoe shooting pew pewing. So hopefully, what the heck what is going on? Like, <laughs> here's all these explosions behind us. What the heck is going on? Sounds like thunder. Like, the further I go out, it sounds like thunder. But we're going to group up going up along the Charlie line. Nothing there. Okay, I'm getting seismic over here in Charlie 3. Target acquired. Got some shots down on that Orion, and he's got a very weak torso already. Not gonna put our necks out there if we don't have to. There we go. Nice. So we have some help from the big guys over here, this mauler, nice. Oh wow! Leading that target completely. That was beautiful. to get some shots down we will but it doesn't look like they're gonna let us do much looks like the rest of my team is kind of backing up a little bit taking more of a flanking approach than a, a straight-on approach which is what I prefer to do but we're gonna make it work and we don't want to sit there on the front lines by ourselves when we know that a lot of their team is still standing there in Delta 3, Charlie 3. You know, it just doesn't make sense for us to be standing here. New target acquired. Okay, okay, okay. Backing up, backing up. We got our shot off. The rest of our team wants to trade. That's totally fine. There he goes. Target. Oh, got him! Wow. New target acquired. Heat level critical. SRM ammo at 25%. New target wow, wow, wow. Acquired. This match is going pretty well so far. I'm not I don't want to jinx it. We do have to worry about our torso, though, unfortunately. Something's tagging me from back here, it looks, it seems like. New target acquired. Okay, that stalker is definitely going to go down. We're going to help out this Kodiak on him. Get that push. Target destroyed. Pushing up. Go around here into Bravo 3. And there he goes. Ow, ow. Ow! Get him! Thank you. 
Thank you, team. Oh, he's alive! Oh, wow! <laughs> he could have easily destroyed me right there. Wow, wow, wow. Woof! Nine to three right now. That could have gone really, really poorly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I thought that he died. I thought my friend killed him, and then all of a sudden I turn around and there he is. Target acquired. Hotel. Target destroyed. Okay, there goes the spider. And I think the last one is that. Is that the Marauder? Is he still over here? We'll help out wherever we can. Yeah, that was a nice shot. I watched that. It's it's on camera. <laughs> Maybe they got that marauder. Yeah, I guess they got the marauder. Woof! Man, what a brawl. These guys are going to tee off on him. He's probably going to die pretty soon, if I had to guess. There he is. Target Who is it? A shadow? Shadowhawk. Is he healthy or not? Want to get the assist? Might not happen, though. There he goes. Oh, we did get the assist. Nice, nice, nice. Woof! What a round! Sheesh. And like I said, very, very skirmish brawly. 759 damage with this guy. Woof! Three kills, five assists, two times doing a solo kill, three times doing the most damage, eight components destroyed. That alpha with these SRMs is just lethal. And, you know, to use that to our complete and total advantage, they're topping... Uh, no, not topping the leaderboard. We had a Kodiak 2 that got the 911 damage, but to get second with this guy, we got more kills. We definitely got more kills. We got five assists on there. Wow, excellent, excellent round. As you could see, we only lost four mechs, which overall is pretty awesome. So that's going to do it for this episode of Mech Warrior Online. That alpha really contributed to the kills, I have to say. The, those small pulses following up off of the alpha of the missiles, the four SRM-6s, that is just deadly. And that's why this thing really does sting like a bee. No pun intended, but, you know, it's going to be there anyway. So... Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of MechWarrior Online. If you liked it, please hit that like button. It really does help out a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It, you know, and become royal today. It really does help out a great deal if you do so. Um, you know, as for some closing thoughts though, before I actually wind this video down, um, in my 100% honest opinion of whether or not I would get this mech if I were you guys right now, I would not get the Butterbee right now. And uh, the reason is because I just don't think the negatives or the positives outweigh the negatives. The negatives being that they don't have, you know, the uh, a su substantial amount of quirks to convince me as to why this mech is so much better than, uh, you know, the other catapult variants, which, you know, do have more quirks to work with. They don't have a hero title on them, but yet they could probably be better. Um, it does have structure to it, and it does have a great, you know, amount of hard points to work with, but I just feel like for a hero mech, it needs to have more quirks um, and just something else to differentiate it. Uh, you know, you don't see many uh, ballistic hard points on the catapult, so it would have been cool to at least have the option with maybe a ballistic hard point, working with the, the you know, the missile hard points, mixing it up between the, the energy hard points as well, even the placement of the energy hard points, like the fact that this is considered the center torso and this, this is considered the left and right torso, they're right next to each other, they're all on top of each other, so it's not that much of a distinction, you know, other than really, well, in, you know, Mech Warrior land, that would be like a couple feet. But this just doesn't seem like too big of a distinction for me as a reason to, to, to really differentiate this guy from the rest of the Catapult chassis. So, 
I'm just gonna go out there and say it right now, especially for the mech credit price, 4,875 mech credits to buy this thing. Just gonna confirm that again one more time for you guys. You know, there we go, 4,875 credits. That is how much the catapult costs, and the catapult has more quirks catering to those actual hard points that are on there. Whereas this guy just simply doesn't. You get the C bill th bonus of 30%, but it just doesn't seem like a, a, a viable reason to go out and spend that kind of uh, you know amount of mech credits on a mech that really just it does deliver from the standpoint of, of you know skirmish brawly. We we had a great round out there, but you know you have to take everything into consideration and 4800 almost 4900 mech credits you know you could you could buy a bundle for that 4875 you know you could buy some of these bundles that are that are or, well actually yeah you could you could buy a jenner master pack for that kind of uh mech credits even a locust pack uh let's see let's see the spider pack you could get the commando, pretty much a, most of the lights, let's put it that, yeah, it is most of the lights that you can get. You can buy an entire mastery pack of lights, which come with the, the hero variant in there um, for the price of this guy. So right now, I would not say to go out and go buy the Butterbee. I would wait probably until they do that. Uh, I believe it comes in the fall, if I remember correctly. They have the uh, half price... Um, mech hero sale so you'll get this guy for half price which would be more around 2400 mech credits you know i would prefer you guys to wait till then if you really want to add this to your to your arsenal of mechs if you really are a diehard catapult fan i don't want to discourage you from taking the, or going out and getting this thing i'm just saying for what it's worth i think it would be more beneficial for you guys to wait until it's on sale if you really are a diehard catapult fan or at least if they make some adjustments to it to make it a little bit more appealing than what it is right now besides the structure uh, you know, that's what I would that's what I would wait for if I were you guys. So there's my honest opinion on this guy. Great round. It is a fun mech. Uh, it definitely has a smaller profile to work with. So, you know, that definitely plays out in our favor. Helped us get back into cover pretty quickly and probably saved my butt <laughs> in that last round. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this mech episode of Mech Warrior Online. I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the battlefield and for the streams and, and everything. So please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the section below whether you liked the video or not. And if you didn't like the video, I would really appreciate your feedback as to why. Um, uh, that really does help in improving the content on the channel. So if you didn't like it, I do value your honest opinion as to why not. And for those of you who do like it, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I love reading all the nice comments that you guys give me. But we're going to close off this video for now. Again, this is the Catapult Butterbee, the second of two hero variants, the second of, uh, you know, the, the new released mechs into Mech Warrior Online for the latest patch update. Um, again, as I said, this is the second of the two hero variants for the Catapult. I want to specify that. So, uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, guys.